Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jason Johansson, the Homicide Lieutenant with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. I want to I have you all here today because I want to provide the community with an update on the murder investigation of Kadata Stewart from February of 2023 and provide details on how our detectives ability to close that investigation ultimately led to the culmination of solving three additional homicide investigations committed by the same person, Michael Coleman. In February of 2023, Kadata Stewart was gunned down in front of a residence in the southwest area of town. As a result of that investigation, Michael Coleman was arrested and is currently charged with their murder and is at Clark County Detention Center as he currently awaits trial. As we continued to build our case against Mr. Coleman, we learned of another individual identified as Carl Chester, who was operating a criminal enterprise here in the Las Vegas Valley. And as part of that criminal enterprise, Carl Chester and his associates defrauded the government of numerous Paycheck Protection Program loans, better known as PPP loans. As this fraudulent money that was obtained by Carl Chester and his associates was dispersed to individuals, Chester would typically receive his cut of the money for the work that he did or how, how they got the lead to get the loan. When individuals did not provide Chester with his cut of the loan, he typically would result to threats of violence or violence itself to get his part of the money. The man Chester would hire to carry out his violence was Michael Coleman. Michael Coleman was tasked with murdering those who shorted Chester his money. And if Coleman couldn't get to the target of who owed them specifically the money, he would target their family members, which is what happened in the Kadata Stewart case, along with the William Hill case. While conspiring, conspiring to commit this murder, Chester and Coleman would often use physical and electronic surveillance, such as trackers, to track their victims and obtain a pattern in life so that they could carry out their act. Based on our investigation, we were able to connect Carl, Michael Coleman to three additional homicides and that he was booked earlier today on in the Clark County Detention Center. In chronological order, those cases are as follows. In May of 2021, Benjamin McCarty was murdered and gunned down in the parking lot of the Pet Boys at the 3900 block of Charleston. He was working on his car when an unknown vehicle parked in a nearby parking lot and a male who we now know as Michael Coleman approached him on foot and shot and killed him in cold blood. Homicide investigated that case and originally we identified the suspect as our Landers Gibson and very early on in our case, we identified Mr. Gibson as the getaway driver, but we knew he was not the shooter. Mr. Gibson since took a plea deal and uh, was convicted on that case. Michael Coleman, we've identified as the shooter in that investigation. What's interesting about this case is this is the one investigation I'm gonna brief you on today that doesn't have anything to do with Carl Chester. All three of these people, Benjamin McCarty, Michael Coleman, Orlanders Gibson, were all part of the Rolling 60s Crips which is a criminal street gang here in Las Vegas, and all were part of the early 2000s indictment of the Rolling 60s. Right now in this investigation, we believe the motive behind this is internal strife within the gangs connected to that indictment. I will now move forward to November of 21, approximately six months later. Marcus Dwayne Larry was murdered in cold blood at the Teriyaki Madness at Charleston and Town Center. If you recall on that, investigation, a masked gunman wearing a COVID mask and a hat walked into the Teriyaki Madness and murdered Demarcus Larry, Marcus Dwayne Larry in cold blood while he's ordering food at the counter and he was with his 13 year old nephew who thankfully was not hit. In that investigation, we arrested a man by the name of Oscar Richardson. And as you may recall, we later obtained evidence that Oscar Richardson was not the person who perpetrated the crime against Marcus Larry. And we later released him the minute we found out the details of his innocence. 
And ultimately, I'm here today to tell you that Michael Coleman is the person who you pictured as the shooter. And through DNA evidence and uh, evidence obtained during this investigation, we have exonerated Oscar Richardson. Uh, we are wrong in that investigation, and we move forward with the rest of Michael Coleman on that. I will lastly cover the murder of William Hill. William Hill was murdered in November of 2022, and he was murdered in front of his residence at the 1100 block of Hassel while he worked on a car. In that investigation, a getaway driver who was driving a red Hyundai, the same red Hyundai that was used in the murder of Kadata Stewart, dropped him off. He walked up to William Hill and he murdered William Hill and then he was picked up by the getaway car and drove away. The shooter in that incident we identified as Michael Coleman and the getaway driver was identified by a male named, by the name of Demarcus Banks. Demarcus Banks, uh, unfortunately, is deceased at this time. We believe that the murder of William Hill was due to his son, who was currently in uh, federal, uh, he was currently in custody with federal prison on PPP loan fraud and for being a felon in possession of a firearm. And because Chester could not get to, and Mr. Co and Mr. Coleman could not get to Shavonta Hill, they targeted his father, William Hill, and that is why William Hill was murdered. Unfortunately, Mr. Chester, who organized three of these murders, along with Michael Coleman, Carl Chester was murdered in March of this year in the northwest part of the family by members of William Hill's family in retaliation for his murder. This investigation was led by our homicide team, but complex investigations such as this do not happen in a vacuum and cannot have been successfully done without the direct support of our forensic lab, Digital Forensic Lab, and various other units within the LVMPD. I would also like to thank our Clark County District Attorney's Office, the FBI Trans Transnational Organizational Crime Task Force, the ATF, and the Office of the Inspector General of the Department of Labor for their assistance in helping solve these investigations. All of those units are they themselves conducting a separate parallel investigation separate from the homicide investigation that deals specifically with the PPP fraud and what we believe is unemployment fraud additionally. All the efforts taken in this investigation show the collaboration necessary to resolve and bring resolve and justice to those families that are involved in all these murders. Our Sheriff's Initiative is to inject humanity in all aspects of police work. This initiative is the driving force behind our homicide's commitment to solve every case. That is why our homicide section has the highest solve rate, one of the highest solve rates in the country, and why we continue to work every murder and to overturn over every stone as we continue to try to strive for evidence on those cases. With that said, I know there'll be questions. I'll take any additional questions that you may have. What charges is Coleman facing? Uh, right now, he's being booked on, he's, he's in, being booked on those three additional murders uh, on top of the murder, he's always on. So it's open murder charges and the conspiracies that go along with that. Uh, additionally, we were able to tie him to an additional shooting uh, that uh, we will push out a press release later on that occurred in the northwest part of town where that person was not murdered, but they were shot, and it was directly related to Mr. Chester also. But that occurred in 2021 also. You say Coleman used trackers. What are these in relation to her, like Apple Air? So uh, you can go, there's, there's certain uh, tracker companies, various different ones, and you could, put a, you could order a tracker to your house, and you could put it on somebody's car, and then you could receive updates on where those vehicles are at. So you would obtain a pattern in life, what time does this person get home, or where are they at specifically at that moment in time, so you can carry out whatever your plan is for that day. You mentioned Oscar Richardson was previously accused in this case. Is there a statement then that you would like to provide in regards to him being accused and now him being exonerated, even though he was exonerated previously? That before we release a statement saying that he was being that he's not arrested anymore, he's no longer charged with it. I don't know if we've ever given a formal statement on it. I'll tell you this: at the end of the day, on the Oscar Richardson part of the investigation, is we were wrong. We got it wrong. Um, but as in every one of our investigations, the the work doesn't end on the day of the arrest. The work continues on all the way up until the day of trial, and the minute. Our detectives began to uncover evidence that led to the exoneration and showed that he was likely not our suspect. We acted on that as fast as we could and in collaboration in the DA's office. But I'll, we were wrong, and, and there's no getting around that. Um, but uh, 
additional evidence came forward on these other investigations that allowed us to be where we are today on this investigation. You mentioned DNA evidence to exonerate one of those suspects. Mm -hmm. Was DNA evidence also used to link Coleman to any of these cases? Uh, DNA evidence was able, we were able to link him in the teriyaki madness case with the, through the utilization of DNA. The other investigative measure we were able to was, was used the, through the use of NIBIN, which is the uh, National Inter uh, Interstate Ballistics and Information Network, and that co correlates cart casings. And uh, so we were able to take a cart case, uh, our, our firearm that was recovered in Coleman's vehicle, and it was able to correlate back to uh, the shooting at the Teriyaki Madness. What other jurisdictions were involved with this other than Metro? Was there any out of state jurisdiction? At this time, uh, the only other jurisdiction I'm aware of outside of here was uh, Coleman in the Kadata Stewart, it's detailed in the Kadata uh, Stewart affidavit. Coleman was stopped in the vehicle used to commit the murder on Kadata Stewart in Arizona, where he was issued uh, a citation, and that is how he was placed in the vehicle on, this, on that case. Outside of that, it's all been local jurisdictions or federal jurisdictions here locally. All right, thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time.